لا في خريطه طريق There is a real roadmap for democracy in Egypt. The Egyptian people have been calling for change for four years. It's our utmost wish to meet their demands and work towards a better democratic future. But in Britain, there have been protests, including a letter signed by British MPs and academics saying that President Sisi shouldn't have been invited, and they accuse you of being a dictator. How do you respond to that? There is freedom of expression in your country and also in ours. I'd like people in Britain to listen to our point of view so they understand us and see what things are like in Egypt. People are looking at the realities of Egypt and they see a draconian counterterrorism law that both Egyptian and international human rights groups have described as a permanent state of emergency. Why does Egypt need that? In the past five years, we've been living in a state of revolution. We want stability. We don't want to do this by force of oppression. The people have a right to demonstrate and they can remove me from office. But Egypt faces monumental problems. And in the past, Egypt endured decades of emergency rule. That's not the case now. Under President Mubarak, there was decades of emergency rule, and Egyptians expected there wouldn't have to be another emergency law, and they see this new law. Why do you need such sweeping powers for your security forces? Even civil dis disobedience is, is regarded as, 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 being not, as not allowed. Don't forget that we're plagued by terrorism along the thousand-kilometer border with Libya and Sinai and around Egypt. We need stability so the rest of Egyptian society can survive. So six months, one year, two years, ten years? How long? We have achieved a great deal in just over a year, and we hope to increase the pace of change. Once we have stability and security, then we won't need any of these extra measures. But tens of thousands are in jail. That's, that is a reality. Is that? Look, these arrests were made within the law. There are not illegal detentions. And this is a country of 90 million people. You yourself said earlier this year that you wanted to free uh, young people who were wrongly jailed. You've already released 100 activists at the time of the Islamic Eid festival. Are you planning to release more who were wrongly jailed? We have regular reviews to make sure no one is wrongly imprisoned. And if the review committee sends me the names of people that are wrongly jailed, then they are released immediately. So you recognize that innocent people are being caught up in these general security sweeps. You hear that people are in prison simply for wearing a revolutionary scarf. That doesn't seem fair. That's true, but these are exceptional circumstances. So it's justified? No, this is not justification. We scrutinize everything very carefully. No one is oppressed in Egypt, but we're living through critical times. Egypt doesn't want to become like other countries in the region. You talk about human rights in Egypt, and what about the millions of Egyptians who face hardship every day? What about their human rights? What about the millions of young people who want a job and, and education? Our friends in the West should know that we face monumental problems, and if we work together, we can find a solution. The people in this country have a right to a decent life. We should not let them down. You're absolutely right. Egyptians tell me, you know, they want food on the table, they want to educate their children. But as you know, stability and security is also important for Egyptians. And when you had a meeting with the Secretary of State, John Kerry, he warned that you were radicalizing the next generation in jail because too many young people were in prison and sometimes in terrible circumstances. Is this your worry as well for the young people of Egypt? 
It's a question of balance. We have to strike the balance between human rights and doing what is right for society as a whole. You've said that one of the biggest threats to Egypt's security and stability is the banned Muslim Brotherhood, which was ousted in 2013 after about a year in power. You said if you were elected that the Muslim Brotherhood would not exist. Is that still your goal? The problem does not lie with the government, it doesn't lie with me. It lies with public opinion, with the Egyptians. Egyptians are peaceful people and they don't like violence. They reacted against the Muslim Brotherhood and are now wary of them. The violence has had a very negative impact on public opinion. Whatever the mistakes were of the Muslim Brotherhood in power, and Egyptians believe that many mistakes were made, there is a worry that by dealing with them in such an extreme way that it will drive them away from any kind of engagement with democracy, will drive them more towards extremism. Do you worry about that? For the past two years, they have been responsible for killings and sabotage and destruction. Why have they done that? Why? This country is big enough to accommodate all of us. Including the Muslim Brotherhood. You see a role. They could continue to exist. Of course. They are Egyptians. But it is up to them to decide what role they want to play in society. Because of the violence they committed in the past two years, they have cut themselves out of political life in Egypt.